hi guys. Oh, saying hi is the worst. Hello and happy new year. So we finally made it to 2021. Maybe that means that the worst is behind us in 2020. I don't know if I necessarily believe that it'll magically get better, but I am excited for another new year. It's nice to know that we made it through another January through December cycle. So we'll see how that goes. Also, I feel like I haven't been in front of the camera for a bit. I think the last time was the beginning of November, maybe even end of October. So it's been about two months, which probably isn't too long in the grand scheme of things with how many videos I've put out. But for me, it feels like a little bit, so I'm kind of excited, but I also feel nervous to be in front of the camera again. I feel like I'm talking to myself, although I'm talking to you. I digress. Anyways, I have a pretty interesting video for us today. So since it's the new year, I was just thinking about a kind of chill, video where instead of doing art right now, we can kind of just go through my art studio, my art space, and what I use to record videos. I just thought that this would be a good video to do to kind of showcase what products and supplies I'm using right now. And then within the year, within a few years, I can kind of show how I've gotten better things, what has progressed, what I'm still using. So I thought this was a good point because I'm still using a lot of the stuff that I kind of just started out with. I have a few extra gadget things, but nothing too crazy or very new but i feel like i've learned quite a lot just from being on youtube for the almost year that i've been doing the art videos so i thought maybe i could just share it with you just in case you have no idea maybe you can get some ideas from me so we'll go over my supplies i'll also give you a little look at the art studio i work out of this little desk over here that i have a bunch of plants doing what they do right over there also it's kind of dark right now it's very rainy but it looks like a lot of the days ahead of us are rainy so instead of just trying to wait for the best sunny day to film i just decided that i need to film this video so i'll do it now and maybe by the end of this video we can talk about some new year's resolutions some people actually really hate that i love new year's resolutions i've always been one that loves new year's resolutions so i kind of wanted to talk about my resolutions from last year what was what I got done, what I didn't get done, and then my resolutions for this year and what I hope to accomplish. So let's get started. So the first thing that is very important to mention is the camera is where I film everything. It's how I film everything. So I use an iPhone 11. I got this phone last year and that was kind of what I was waiting for to start the YouTube videos. So I knew I wanted to make YouTube videos. I knew I needed a camera. I knew I was gonna upgrade my phone. So once I upgraded my phone, I was like, okay, great. Now we're making the YouTube videos. So yeah, I use an iPhone 11. I don't actually have a fancy DSLR camera just yet, hopefully eventually, but those are very expensive. And also I haven't used this in a while, but I know months ago when I was, working less hours and I had more time for video production quality. I also have my old iPhone 7 Plus that I was using for like a second angle for some of my videos. The camera quality isn't as great so I don't use it as a primary camera but it was really nice to use it as a secondary source just so you can kind of get a glimpse at a different angle even if it wasn't best quality. It was cool to do that and I want to do more of that. I'm actually charging it right now so that I can use it for a video because every time I go to use it, it's dead. And instead of spending the time to charge it, I just say, I guess I don't need it that bad. Now beyond the camera, I need something to hold it. So I have this tripod that right now my iPhone 11 is being held with. And it's one that I bought on Amazon. It wasn't too expensive. I just wanted something to start out. There's so many different tripods on Amazon, so many different phone tripods. And really I wasn't sure which one I needed or would like the most. I do think that the legs on the, on the one that I have is a bit short. I would have liked it if the legs were just a little bit longer, but I like that they're bendable and they're flexible and you can kind of get a lot of mobility out of it. And it works for my needs right now. So I really don't have too many complaints. It's a little bit top heavy sometimes with the phone. So if I don't set it up right, it will fall over. But for the most part, it's sturdy enough and it does exactly what it said it would do. So I'm pretty happy with it. And it's what I've been using since the start of YouTube. And it's what I'll probably use for a much longer time. Now, in terms of lighting, lighting of course is very important. It is one of the most important things. I think it's a little bit more important than your camera quality, because if you have bad light, no matter how good your camera quality is, 
it's not going to be as crisp unless you have like a really great nighttime camera but that's a different story so right now i can't even tell how the quality of this video is going to be since it's kind of dark in my room and i'm probably in a lot of shadow but for me my favorite source of light is daylight i get a good amount of light in my room especially at my desk area i have this nice window of course my desk is set up right next to the window because i just like working in natural light i also like sunlight to be beaming onto my face i'm usually vitamin d deficient so all the sunlight i can get is the best light to get <laughs> and my plants like it too so that's the best lighting that there is however i did for my birthday last year get this softbox light and i think it was about 50 dollars. it's just a simple on off system right here it's plugged into my wall yeah it's a uh, it's very top heavy i have some shoes tied onto it so that it wasn't falling over because i kept bumping into it and then it would just fall over on everything i thought that was going to be perfect so that i could film at night and start making a lot more videos during nighttime when i had a lot more free time i don't make a lot more videos at nighttime and it's not because i don't want to however i don't know where's the best place to shine it to kind of get rid of some of the, the the shadows that it causes. So yeah, that's kind of the lighting. Again, most of the time it's daylight, but I do have some other light sources that I'm still trying to play around with. Next thing is my desk. So obviously if you're going to draw and film videos, you will need a desk. And my desk is kind of small. I wish it was a little bit longer, but for my space right now, I probably couldn't fit a longer desk in it anyways. But one of the cool things about my desk is that it's two layers. So it has the lower layer glass, the main working space, and it has this little lifted area. The only reason why I like it is because it puts, I can put my tripod on it and create a little bit more height so that I can kind of film everything on the workspace. The only thing that I don't like is that it creates a shadow when the light hits it onto the table. So you can probably see in some of my videos, sometimes my artwork has a bit of this like dark line shadow and that's just from the edge of this top piece of the desk. If that didn't exist, this desk would be absolutely perfect for what I need it to be. The next thing I wanna talk about is editing. So we just kind of went over how I kind of film my videos and that part of things. But after the video is filmed, how do I make it that nice professional quality that you wanna see here on YouTube? Maybe not necessarily professional quality, but just good enough quality. I have a MacBook Pro. I don't remember the generation, but it's definitely one of the newer ones. I think I bought it two years ago. It was, a combined birthday gift with some money that I got and with some money that I put in for myself. It's kind of expensive, so I definitely needed some help with that, but it was a gift that I bought myself and I'm very happy to have it. So I just use iMovie. Now iMovie is just the video editing software that comes with MacBooks, plain as day. Now I'll tell you what, it's definitely not the best video editing software there is. Final Cut Pro is beautiful. I used it in college and it was nice to have that ability to use something of such professional quality. iMovie is not that. But when you're just starting out and you're just trying to make videos, honestly, anything would work because you don't really need so many cool effects. You don't really need dazzling lights. You don't really need all the bells and whistles because if your content's good, your content will be good regardless. However, if you're trying to up your content game, it is nice to have things like Final Cut Pro specifically. But iMovie right now just works for what I need it to. Just basic editing, just get the video together, slap it through. There are some limitations in terms of like text. For some reason, you can't really get too many fonts. You can't really get very interesting transitions and effects with text and other things like that. However, when I do want to customize the text, maybe the colors, maybe make it hand drawn, I do refer to Procreate. So I have an iPad and I forget what generation it is. I have an Apple Pencil, I think it's like the first generation, but I remember buying it specifically for Procreate and I'm in love. That's pretty much all I use my iPad for. It seems like a waste of money, but honestly, it really wasn't because before I had the iPad, I did have an art tablet. I ended up selling it, so I don't remember what brand it was, but even though it was like an expensive art specific drawing tablet, the quality wasn't as great as the iPad, which is funny because the iPad's primary focus isn't art, but the iPad works so much better than that worked. So to me, I'm getting my money's worth with the iPad more than I was with the art tablet that I had. So I think it was worth it. And so that's what I'll use sometimes if I want to kind of spice up the text. Now, speaking of my iPad, again, Procreate is the system that I use. A lot of artists use it, so I'm pretty sure you've heard of it. I'm not a huge digital artist. I knew I was never really super fond of digital art. I think it's great to learn about and it's something that I still want to learn more about, but it's never gonna be my preferred medium. I'm such a traditional artist, like through and through, it's just in my veins. But 
Procreate is nice because of thumbnails. That is where I make all my thumbnails for all of my videos. If you're not upping your thumbnail game, I don't know what you're doing, but you should do it. Now, the next thing I want to talk about are voiceovers. So for a lot of my videos recently, I've been talking through them. I think I've been doing a lot of unboxings and stuff like that. So it's just been more effective to just talk through them while I'm doing the process. But for some videos, voiceovers are the necessity. I use my old standard plug-in earphones that came with my iPhone. And what I'll do is I'll take the, the ear that has the microphone, I put a sock over it. So the reason I put a sock over it, if you don't really use microphones too often, is it kind of decreases some static, some outside noise. And when you're talking into it, that breath, when you're like, pop, 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 it gets into the mic and then you kind of hear like this fuzzy feedback. So it helps to eliminate or diminish some of that effect. It looks funny every time I do it, but I think the quality is better when I put the sock over it than when I don't. So that's how I make my voiceovers. The next thing that I want to talk about, and I think the last thing when it comes to my video making process is my hard drive. I think I might've mentioned it in another video, but this baby right here is a lifesaver. I remember not wanting to spend the money on it because this was about a hundred dollars and that seems kind of crazy for this wallet size little device here but this is so 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 great and i'm very happy to have it and honestly whenever i need a new one i'll spend the hundred dollars and i won't think twice about it so this is my hard drive i think it's funny because i remember back in the day when you would have a desktop computer and the hard drive would be this huge monolith and it would be loud and it was just crazy and this is a hard drive right here. So the reason I have this hard drive, as nice as my laptop is, I did not get a lot of space on this computer. I could edit three videos and then my space was like full on my computer. And I was like, whoa, that's intensely not enough space. And so the options were I could just delete the videos off the computer once they were done, they were gonna be on YouTube, so it didn't really matter. But then I thought if for whatever reason my YouTube exploded my youtube channel just deleted itself if something crazy happened i want my video somewhere somewhere that i have and so that's where this became really important and now every time i make a video i just export it to this directly from this i upload it to youtube i delete it off of my computer and my computer is happy again and that solved a lot of the problem that i was having the first few times i was making videos and I recommend it for people who are trying to make videos. So yeah, so this is just a SanDisk hard drive. It's 500 gigabytes, so it's a pretty good amount of space, honestly, and it's gonna hold a good amount of videos, which I think is absolutely wonderful. 500 gigabytes for about $100. It wasn't too bad. So from like this corner, right about to that corner is my entire art studio. And, you know, what I wanted to do with my art studio, just to kind of make it a little bit more fun, was I bought all these Studio Ghibli postcards and I just sticky tacked them to my wall. And right now I just kind of have a mess with like my plants over here, my plants up there, and then Finn doing whatever Finn does up there. So it's a bit cluttered. It looks like a lot of plants just in this one area, but that's just because it's a work in progress. I'll take you guys in a little bit closer so we can kind of see what I have closer up okay, that's george he is a monstera deliciosa he might be my favorite plant and i know plant moms are not supposed to pick favorites but i have a bit of a favorite i really love him he grows kind of crazy but he is just so stunning i really love his leaves that have like the holes i think they're the cutest leaves ever like look at how not you not you leaf look at how nice it looks with the holes he is so precious. Anyways, I am getting sidetracked. So here is my desk. Typically I have my laptop around here when I'm working. And this is obviously Kyo Soma from Fruit Baskets. I really loved this image and like the end scene of like the most recent season. I thought it was so beautiful and I thought he looked so precious. And I really like the greenery. I think it really matches with my whole theme of green going on. So I just made that my background, but I keep digressing. Anyways, this is my desk and my primary workspace as you guys already know. And then in here, in this drawer on the left here, this is pretty much just a junk drawer. Just keep random unnecessary stuff in it. And then in this right drawer, I have my like needed art supplies or the ones that I reach for the most often. So I just kind of have them stuffed in here because if I need them, it's good to have them. And this used to be a little bit more organized and it's not. 
So some of my paper I'll keep in here because when I'm trying to do an artwork, I'll need that. This shouldn't even be in here, but it is. I have my inks from Heikala's art box underneath there. I have this little sketchbook that I do some of my Posca sceneries in, in here as well. I have my mini Elo sketchbook. I haven't really used it yet. I don't know what I want to use it for just yet. So I just kind of have that in here as well. And then I have my watercolor paints. Those are my mystery Artemis handmade watercolor paints. I have the one that I use the most often, this core set of watercolor paints, my fine tech pearlescent paints, and then I have some black India ink and a bunch of like art supply stuff. This drawer is what I'll put like the most recently used things. He's chilling. And right now from my old sketch sketches, I have this notebook here and some other drawing notebooks here. And this little guy, I hold my paper. I hold some paper. I have this old watercolor palette that I don't really use anymore. And then this was like a planner and this was from my sketchbook in a day challenge. I just have that in here and I have a scroller box sticker. Oh, I have two scroller box stickers in there. So here I just have a bunch of paint. A lot of this is oil paint from when I was in college. And then here I just have a bunch of nail polishes. <laughs> I haven't painted my nails in a while, but I have a bunch of nail polish. This is just like kind of like my own personal things like from high school some documents and stuff so none of this is really art and i can't really open it right now because it's like but it's okay i don't really need any of this and if i do i could just move it let me pick you up here these are my spoons i just recently decided that i wanted to collect spoons and then moving down i have this pack of apple barrel acrylic paint so i have these acrylic paints i usually don't really use them for arch in general but i think it'd be cool if i started getting into more like multimedia stuff and mixing things like acrylic with my watercolors i don't know and then here i have this jug or mug that i painted myself at this like place and then they baked it for us and gave it to us and i just put these like little strawberries and these like green things on it i don't know i thought it was a little cute design and stuff and then a yellow handle for it there and this is where i hold my brushes moving down I have this, this I've had since like high school days. Like this was like one of the first desk organizers that I bought. So I have a bunch of random things in here. I have this like double-sided tape right now, just kind of chilling in there. I have some uh, thumbtacks for my cork board. And then I have a lighter here for my candles, some lead, nail clippers. These are my scissors that I've had probably since like middle school time. And then in here I have some Prisma color pencils and some Crayola color pencils. And then I have a bunch of Sharpies. Getting out of that corner and into this big storage cabinet, I have this artwork from the average artist, Stephanie, that I bought from her like Patreon. And then I have a ah, pencil case. And then back there is my Polaroid camera that I use pretty often, but it's just chilling back there right now in this drawer so at this top one i keep a bunch of my artworks in in the second one i keep like a lot of mail and stuff so i won't open that because i don't know if you'll see my address but in this one i have my heikala box i still have some like art supplies in here probably and then some watercolor paper and here right now is where i'm keeping my tray for gouache and where i'm keeping my gouache paints i also have my ohuhu markers i don't really use them too often i'm not a big marker fan as much as i thought i would be when i started trying them out but i still have those there and then the rest of my postcards are here and then i have an old sketchbook and some other paper type things and then this last drawer is another pretty much like junk drawer but like a bigger space for like my junk things i have a bunch of snapple caps so i have like this jar this this baggie full and then instead of wasting more baggies, I just started throwing them in this drawer. So yeah, I, I collect Snapple caps and I just like them because they have like their little Snapple facts. So this one says, popcorn was invented by the American Indians. So I really like Snapple facts. I really think there's like cool little things to have with your drink. And I just dropped that. I collect those and everything else here is like junk. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that was like very haphazard and I don't think I explained things too well. I'll keep you guys updated if I ever update my art studio, but this is pretty much what it is right now. I know it's just a corner. It's pretty much just a desk, but it's my studio. It's, it's where I work. So yeah. So we're coming to the end of this video, but I did want to take some time to talk about New Year's resolutions. I don't want this to be too long-winded, but I did want to talk about it anyways. So that's what we're gonna do. Last year, of course, like a lot of people, I didn't expect a worldwide pandemic to kind of 
hit us. <laughs> and so I had a lot of plans that definitely didn't go through. I really wanted to travel a lot last year and I just couldn't, which is fine. You know, sometimes life has a way of showing you that different things are gonna happen. So I remember last year I wanted to start my YouTube channel. I knew that was something that I wanted to do. But at that time, I just wanted to do the art podcast. I didn't really want to go into like other art videos. But as I was making the art podcast, I was like, no, I want to just make art videos, like all types of art videos. I want to talk about things, but I also just want to make art videos without having a topic each time. So that kind of molded and evolved into what my art YouTube channel is now and I'm really happy with where it is now. I'm having a lot of fun making videos so I wouldn't change it for the world but that was a resolution last year that I wanted to start and then I did start. Now for this year and moving into 2021 I do have some new goals in my life. So for starters I want to let you guys know that I'm going back to school. However I do not want to sacrifice making videos for YouTube. This is something that I want to grow. This is something that I wanted to do for years. I mentioned in my last video that I used to have an art YouTube channel when I was like a child. I was like 13, 14 when I had that channel. So this was something I always wanted to do. So I don't want to put it on the back burner and I don't want to forget about it. So don't expect that my videos are going to be gone. If they have to be more infrequent, I'll let you guys know, but I'm really gonna try and set a good schedule for myself, especially when the sun starts setting later again, I'll have more daylight to work on videos, but that's definitely something that I'm going to continue to push forward and continue to chug along with. It is kind of hard to juggle work, school, and art. I know that because in college I didn't really draw and at the latter half of high school I kind of stopped drawing so I know how difficult it can be but now that I have been working a lot on my own motivation levels and my own determination levels I'm not gonna let it fall to the wayside keep me to that the next goal that I have is I want to finish a sketchbook fully from front cover to back cover right now I'm working on the elo sketchbook and that's kind of the one that I know I want to finish I don't want it to take the entire year but if it takes the entire year I want to finish it by the end of the year so i want to draw more and more sketchbooks and sketch a lot more often i actually have been taking it now with me in my bag whenever i go to work and whenever i go out like i go out anywhere besides work but i want to start drawing more and i'm trying to take it with me so that i can remember it when i'm on the go and not have it just at home because then i don't really draw because if i'm at home making a drawing i'm usually trying to do a video yada 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 so that's another goal of mine and then the last but certainly not least, the most important goal I have for this year, and I think I've mentioned this in passing before, but I am a Christian and I don't think I've ever really been a, a devout Christian, but at this point in my life, I really want to work on my relationship with God. So at like the last quarter of last year, I started reading more, I started praying more, I started studying more, and that filled me with so much excitement, so much happiness, and it was really good for me because I went through that little rough patch that I had like a vlog about. And right after that rough patch, like I kind of just was like on an uphill slope and I still feel like I'm on an uphill slope. And that to me right now is the most important thing, more important than YouTube, more important than school. It's my relationship with God. And I'm gonna put that above all else. So that's something that's very big for me. And that's definitely a rough, resolution that I want to work on and I know I'm going to work on because I'm not just starting it in January I started it last year so that's like my top resolution for 2021 and I'm really excited about it because I think it's gonna be really good for me how many times can I say really in a sentence so I think that's all that I wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching please have a great day, have a great week, and have a great year. Happy New Year to all of you guys. I really do hope that you have a really great and blessed new year and that you can work on whatever goals that you wanted to and that you can accomplish all the goals that you set in your mind. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.